Welcome to the Unlist. Well, we are heading into the middle of March, which I think is right around the right time to start discussing springtime fragrances. So this is my official Unlist of springtime fragrances for 2024. But before I get into unlisting my favorite spring smells, I'd like to mention a slowly evolving movement in the mainstream slash designer mastige, prestige, wherever you want to call department store fragrances these days. I want to discuss a small evolving movement I see and how it may affect your springtime choices, really, up through early summer. And it seems to be a return of green but in a different way than some of us older fellows might recognize or even appreciate. So green fragrances have really been out of vogue for a very, very long time. In fact, green fragrances have been out of fashion for longer than a lot of people in the current online fragrance community have been alive. The last time really noticeably green fragrances were actually popular was probably the early 90s right around the time aquatics took over and then the sweeter lighter airier fresh fougeres the children of eternity basically when all that stuff took over and then we ended up with ck1 and all of the fluffy white musk fragrances and then all of the ozonics leading up through aqua di Porum in 96 and then the gourmands came around and they were kind of slightly green because they had patchouli bases but then they also had a bunch of sweet stuff on top so actually overtly green fragrances have been really out of fashion for pushing 30 years and don't get me wrong there have been vetiver scents here and there i mean tom ford gray vetiver was sort of a big hit when it came out and we've seen a lot of other hit or miss green revivals there was an attempt actually to bring green back right around the time green went away early 90s mid 90s by the end of the 90s you had designers trying to bring it back you had gucci envy for men you had the dolce and gabbana by man you had uh giacomo had aura you had carbon ohm you had all these other attempts to kind of bring back the green usually they would mix green with amber or green with something else to try and disguise it. Calvin Klein had contradiction for men and they had truth in the early 2000s, but most of these attempts to bring back green failed. You know, you had Eau de Cartier Concentre, another very green fragrance. They just didn't really catch on. They were sold for a couple of years. They weren't discontinued immediately. Things didn't get discontinued right away like they do now. Nowadays, when a fragrance comes out, if it doesn't do well, it's out of the counters in six months. I literally saw Mont Blanc um, Explorer Platinum, right, hit the shelves two months ago. It's gone already. Already discontinued. Already in discounters. And the fragrance didn't even make it to the six-month mark. We're talking literal months, and it's gone. I mean, I think it's still available from their website, maybe, but all signs point towards it being flushed almost immediately. A one and done batch, just like Avon puts out a fragrance, makes one batch of it. If it doesn't sell out immediately, that's it. No more gets made. We are getting to the point now where the fragrances are so here today, gone yesterday, blink, you miss it, cutthroat, that stuff does not get a chance to even find an audience before it's gone. However, a lot of those green fragrances that came out in the 90s, in the early 2000s, in an attempt to bring the style back, they weren't gone right away. So we had a false impression, some of us. Some of us had a false impression that green was still around. But what we were really dealing with was failed but slower moving inventory that lingered in the market for probably a decade or so. But by and large, green fragrances were gone. They have been gone for, like I said, 30 years. There are a lot of enthusiasts in the online fragrance space 
that I consider stuff from the early 2000s to be really old. Polo Blue, over 20 years old, for example, right? A lot of the original Kenneth Cole fragrances are now vintage. If you go by the 20 year rule, definitely vintage. They're all over 20 years old. So, you know, that's just where we are. And to see after literal decades of aquatics, decades of blue fragrances, decades of gourmands, of heavy handed, bubblegummy, sweet shower gel fragrances, that designers, prestige, mastige, whatever, are starting to sneak green notes back into the mix. It tells me that they are trying to steer the ship back towards that direction, but they are not committal. They are sort of one leg in, one leg out, or one foot in, one foot out, as I always say, about people who kind of want to go like this, but they don't want to, oh, can't quite go. No, got to go back to where it's safe. Got to stay safe. Got to like poke the bear, just, 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 and then go back like this. That's where they are right now with green fragrances. They are just sort of doing this. And you can see it with releases like Coach Green, for instance, which was kind of more of a Sauvage remix with green notes mixed in. Parfum de Marley had Greenly several years back. It was originally called Sutton. Those of you who remember it as Sutton, okay? It was only Sutton for like a month. Those bottles are now extremely valuable if you have them that are labeled Sutton. But that was another sort of non-committal, green, but still sweet, still fresh, clean, sort of fruity, but had some green nuances to it. Coach Green's another one. And then we saw Hermes take the biggest, and as far as I'm concerned, boldest step towards that direction by coming out with H24, which H24 was a very green scent, very noticeable sage, very noticeable narcissus, okay? That was a big green slap in the face, and a lot of people balked at it. Yes, indeed, they balked at it. And because they balked at it, we saw the much sweeter Eau de Parfum as a reaction to that. The much sweeter, a little bit more of a resinous, but mostly sweeter Eau de Parfum, H24 Eau de Parfum. And that kind of made me sad that so many people were just used to the shower gel, used to the candy stuff, used to all that, you know, just kid gloves type fragrances. They couldn't take a staunch green fragrance. It was just for them, they need to be coddled and held by more shampoo, by more chewing gum. And I'm just like, come on, man, let it go. Time to, time, time to actually wear a fragrance like you mean it, okay? Wear something green <laughs> or leather or peppery or something, right? Come on. So don't let us be stuck in this eternal hellscape of health and beauty product styled fragrances forever. I don't want to have to keep paying $400 for something that smells like head and shoulders, but in a crystal bottle. I'm just tired of that, okay? I don't want to wear expensive head and shoulders anymore. I'm just tired. So what I have to say to you in regard to that is these newer green fragrances need to find an audience for us to get away from these shower gel fragrances, these blue fragrances, these sweet bubblegummy, saffrony, cinnamon, apple, strudel, cake, whatever type stuff that we're straddled with now. So we got to support these attempts to move back towards the green fragrances. It's been way too long. It's been almost 30 years. Let's have some chlorophyll. Let's have some cis 3 hexanol. Let's have some big galbanum notes, some big old fat vetiver, some cedar wood. I want to see it. I want the mosses to come back. Even if it's synthetic, I don't care. Synthetic oak moss is better than no oak moss. I just want to see some green, guys. I want to see some sage. I want to see some basil. I want to see some herbs, all right? I want the Garig to come back into the vernacular. I'm tired of all the bakery good stuff. I want to feel like I'm outside in the garden. Okay, it's where I want to be. Now, support the green releases. And speaking of that, even though I don't really like the Valentino, uh, Womo, Born in Roma range, I don't like the range. The original one is okay. It's kind of 
got some uh, late 90s, early 2000s fierce cologne vibes that I like, but most of that Born in Roma range to me is trash. However, the newest one called Green Stravaganza, now there's a mouthful, okay, but Valentino, Womo, Born in Roma, Green Stravaganza. If you can say it three times fast, you'll win the Cracker Jack prize. Valentino, Womo, Born in Roma, Green Stravaganza. Whew. That actually has a fairly decent uh, attempt at a pseudo fougier, new fougier, what I call new gear, right? It's got a bit of a new gear vibe. It has some uh, lavender in it. It's got some spices. It still veers a bit sweet, but it's another, you know, again, it's another just small step in the direction that we need to go. It's pushing further into the green sphere, and that's where we need to be. So, again, support them. Now, I've spent 10 minutes talking about that stuff. Let's actually get to my uh, unlist of green fragrances for spring, okay? So, you've waited this long. Here we are, 11 minutes in. So, for me, <clears throat> all of my favorite springtime fragrances are going to feel extremely old school to a lot of you because a lot of you don't like things that are older than 10, 15 years old. And I'm going back into the previous century in most cases. I'm going back into the 20th century for all of my favorite stuff. So, you know, all of my fragrances that are springtime, that are this green time of year, their year of release all starts with a 19, not with a 20. <laughs> so a lot of you guys are going to hate me. I'm sorry. It just it is what it is. I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm not an elitist. I'm not a purist. I like new fragrances. I really do like new fragrances, but not a lot of them really speak spring to me. They don't speak that verdant, flowery, rainy day, springtime. Just modern fragrances don't get the springtime vibe for me. So unfortunately, when I want to feel like it's spring, especially when it is actually spring outside, I got to look backwards. I got to look back in time to get my fix. So <clears throat> right off the bat, Guerlain Vetiver, 1961. Some say 60, some say 59. I don't think so. I think 61. Sort of the reference vetiver for a lot of people. I mean, you could argue that because Eau de Vetiver by um, Givenchy was before that, and then Carvin had a vetiver fragrance as well before that. So what it, whichever one of those you want to call your reference vetiver, it's fine. But the Guerlain vetiver is there for me. And shout out to the uh, Murdoch of London vetiver is another good one for that particular vibe. And if you want a little bit drier and woodier vetiver, you don't want the, the tobacco nuances, you don't want the leathery nuances, you just want straight vetiver in your face, then another good option would be the Ancre Noir line from Lalique. Any of them works. The original one is probably the darkest. The Sport is lighter for those who want that. But gotta have the vetiver. The vetiver is the springtime for me. And then of course, the lighter stuff, the more cologne style uh, green fragrances. So this is where Eau Sauvage from 1966 comes out to play. I like Eau Sauvage. Also, a uh, little fancier, more floral take on that particular style would be from 1974. It would be Eau de Guerlain, Eau de Guerlain from 1974. It's sort of more of a rosy take on that whole Eau Sauvage style. It's kind of like Eau Sauvage and a pair of cufflinks and a three-piece suit with done over hair. So it's like fancy Eau Sauvage, but Eau de Guerlain can't go wrong with it. Also, a lot of those O's from that period will also do. So if you have Eau de Batu or Eau de Roche or Eau de Rochas, it doesn't have to be the man's version from the 90s. It can be the old one. The old one is unisex. Eau de Lancome also works. All of those. Okay, so whether it's Eau de Lancome, Eau de Batu, Eau de Rochas, Eau de Guerlain, all of those O's work great in spring. They have the herbs, they have the florals, they have the bitter moss. Another one would be Ho Hong. The original 70s Ho Hong, it's extremely expensive. I know, it's a unicorn now. Most of you aren't going to get to experience that anymore, and that's really unfortunate because it's a good fragrance, but that's another one. 
very herbal contingent, has some orris in there, some really dry, almost powdery lavender with a mossy base. Really good spring fragrance for me. <clears throat> of course, we fast forward through into the 90s, we see a really odd one that's kind of out of time, honestly. A fragrance that's not really with the period it was released, but to me also evokes images of high greenery, and that is going to be 1996, Om de Grey, Om de Grey, 1996. If you like Capucci Pour Homme from 67, right, that's more of a citrus, labdanum, uh, pyrolone kind of thing with that. If you wish it was greener and more herbal, take the Capucci Pour Homme, add more herbs to it, add some lavender, make it greener, make it more herbal, and then you've got Homme de Grey, which some people prefer that for that reason. And me, I like them both. For me, Capucci Pour Homme is more summer, more summertime, the Italian-esque summer vibe with the labdanum, with the bergamot. The spring has the herbs, has the green, has that sort of deal. Homme de Grey is gonna cover me in that regard. Other ones I might recommend for a greener feel. It's probably one that's unlikely for some of you, but when you really think about it, it quite is. And that is uh, Aramis New West from 1988, an early Harry Fremont composition, actually. And uh, sadly discontinued because everything Aramis is basically discontinued except for the original. But the original was kept. Everything else got the axe. The whole brand, actually, Aramis brand got killed off because Estee Lauder is trying to move more into the Frederick Mall space, more exclusive, more expensive. So they want all their fragrances to be two and three hundred dollars a bottle. So a lot of their classic stuff is getting killed off, you know, or getting remade as a niche fragrance. So that meant the Aramis had to go. However, if you're able to get a bottle of New West, it has a very heavy K Lone melon opening that may not appeal to some people, but once you get past that honeydew melon vibe with the K Lone in the opening, it goes right into the sage right into the herbs you get sandalwood it's very green it's very woody it's very springtime and i think it's very good for this time of year alternatively you can also pick up some others of a similar stripe <clears throat> avon had one called trailblazer that kind of has more of a leathery nuance still has that melon the herbs but has an odd leather undertone so it's like pyrolone meets new west kind of weird Avon is generally kind of weird anyway. It's why I like them so much. Also, you could sub in Escape for Men by Calvin Klein, which came out a year before the Trailblazer in 93 instead of 94. So the Calvin Klein Escape for Men may feel a bit too tropical, though. It has a more of a melon focus. New West uses a smaller amount of the Kalo. New West focuses primarily on the herbs, on that green aspect the woods but the escape for men does lean more heavily into a tropical feel you might want to hold off for summertime but it is one that could substitute for new west if you can't find it at a good price another one a bit expensive also discontinued another one that could become a a treasure hunt for some of you would be sud est romeo gigli the original Romeo Gigli, Womo, gets more attention because it's an analog to Egoist, as some will say. But its lesser known, lesser appreciated sibling, which shares the same bottle as Romeo Gigli, is Romeo Gigli Sudest. And it came out in 94. And it kind of takes that whole Gehrig hillside with the herbs thing to its maximum extreme. So. If you want to have a flow chart here and escape for men is the most melon of the two of the three most melon new west is kind of in the middle balances the melon with the herbs if you want to go far into the herb side of things then the sud est is going to really get you still has that melon opening but it's very very slight it's almost almost invisible but it's there if you have a sensitivity to calome if Kalone is the boogeyman lurking in your closet and you're scared of it, then any amount at all is going to trigger you. And I'm sorry if it does. But if you're able to, like, you know, just have your little bib in for a second and deal with it like a little baby, eventually 
you'll get to the beautiful woody herbal dry down of Sudest and the big bad boogeyman Kalone will go away. Just got to give it like five minutes. If you can do five minutes of Kalone, the rest of the fragrance is definitely worth it. It's very, very herbal, very springtime. Flowery fragrances also play a role in spring. Okay, maybe not to the same extent as the green stuff. I really like the green stuff more, but I do like some of the flowery stuff. I do like to break out some of my more flowery sheep ray fragrances. Some honorable mentions. White florals are really nice. So if you have some stuff like Private Collection by Estee Lauder or Unspoken by Avon, those work great in the spring. Other ones include violet fragrances. I did a whole video where I named violet stuff, talked about violet stuff. So I don't want to kind of go over that again here, but violet fragrances are really good in spring. So that Eau de Cartier Concentre, if you have it, break it out. Truth, Men, Calvin Klein, if you have it, break it out. Contradiction, also break it out. You can also go down and do something like gray flannel. Gray flannel has a nice ashy kind of violet vibe to it as well. Green Irish Tweed by Creed, another good springtime fragrance because it has a very vivid verbena and violet. <clears throat> okay, very noticeable grassy material. So once more, that is one you can enjoy. Other ones that kind of do the floral vibe, a little bit dustier of a floral, the 1881 Pour Homme by Nino Cerruti, another good springtime fragrance. Has a little bit of a rose veneer to it, but it's very dusty, very dry. <clears throat> I think it would play very well in springtime. Of course, you could also get very, very Saturnine with your green notes too. Very dark, okay. If you want to go that sort of Tim Burton vibe with your green materials. You can do Or Black by Pascal Morabito. It's a very dark little number, but I think it'll work well. Also Dunhill Blend 30, for those of you with the cash or patience to find a bottle of that. Another good spring springtime fragrance. Jewels, a little bit easier to find by Christian Dior. If Eau Sauvage is too light for you, if you find Eau Sauvage too light, but you want a similar green feel, you can do Jewels. Jewels from 1980, another good green springtime sort of fragrance that you could definitely rock out. Some lesser known ones that I like to go for would be uh, <clears throat> Parfum d'Orsay had a fragrance in the 70s called Les Nomad. Les Nomad is another fantastic green fragrance. Plays around with vetiver, plays around with cedar wood, has some labdanum, okay, some musk mallow in it. Very weird, interesting, left the center kind of fragrance. Very good in springtime. Alternatively, uh, you could also use another Dorsey fragrance called Chevalier Dorsey. This one's really old. This one goes back to like 1911. Like 1911, guys. But if you can pick it up, if you can find it, the Chevalier Dorsey, very nice Artemisia note. Very, very heavy on the Artemisia. If you love Artemisia, you know, that whole uh, wormwood kind of feeling, if you like that, then you can definitely pick that up with the Chevalier d'Orsay. And it's got bergamot. It's got some majorum in it, okay? So it's got some armoire, if you know what that is. Very, very nice. Very, very springtime. Very green. Not as green as Les Nomad, but definitely in there. So now I want you to list for me your favorite green and or springtime fragrances. You know, or you can do as I do and you can unlist them for me, which means just spit them out in random order. However you want to phrase it, put them in the comment section below. Tell me your thoughts on springtime, on green fragrances. And these newer green fragrances that are hitting the counters, you got to support them. You got to let your designer brands know that we're tired of blue, we're tired of gourmand, we want more green. It's been too long. It's been a generation for some people. Let's bring it back to the green. Thanks for watching. See you next time.